Hey guys, Joe here, back to the word. Today I want to bring you some Corona reflections. It's been a crazy season. I want to share two verses with you guys and then also two reflections or things the Lord's kind of laid on my heart. And so if you want to skip ahead in the video, those will be marked out. But I just wanted to share. As the digital media specialist for a church, my job got crazy when the coronavirus pandemic hit. But in my time with the Lord I, and listening to online sermons, I've been thinking about a few things that I wanted to share with you guys. The first comes from Isaiah 54 verse 17. I heard a pastor talk about this and it's just been rattling around in my brain. It said this, no weapon that is fashioned against you shall succeed. The verse goes on to say some other things, but that's the point I want to say is like no weapon that is fashioned against you shall succeed. This points out some two truths. One, that there are weapons that are coming against us. There are real threats out there in the world. Sometimes we don't think about them. But if we acknowledge and know there's a real th threat, we're going to respond differently. I think about 1 Peter 5 where Peter tells us the devil wanders around looking for someone to devour like a roaring lion. I promise if I told you there was a roaring lion waiting to devour you right outside of your apartment tomorrow morning, you would walk to the car in a different manner than if you believe he didn't exist. And so a weapon formed against us. There are realities, there are things out there that are weapons that are coming against us. There are real threats, and we do need to acknowledge those. Second, I would say, shall succeed. This verse points us forward to eternity. During this crisis, I've been thinking a lot about that. What really matters for eternity? There are threats now, but it says they shall not succeed. They shall not stand, depending on your translation of God's word. Now, I know as I share that from Isaiah, that's really a promise for God's people Israel. He's speaking directly to them. But as I've been thinking about the New Testament parallel, I found myself over in Romans 8, verse 28 and beyond. A lot of pastors have been quoting this recently online and it's just got me thinking about this verse and also the context of the verse. Romans 8.28 falls in a section where Paul is talking about the spirit and the blessing we have by being in God's family through salvation. It says the spirit intercedes for our saints according to the will of God. And then 28 it says, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. Now this verse is often used as a promise, name it, claim it verse. All things work together for good. I don't think as I read the text here and the context, that's always the case. Because what we want to see is we want to see all things work together for good in the immediate future that we get to see. We want to redefine what God says is good. We want to redefine his purpose and his will. But I think the anchor truth for this text is that all things in this life, no matter what happens, whether we see them or not, God is working together for the eternal good of those who are his children, of those who are called according to his purpose. Check it out later. It says, it talks about our destination as being glorified together with God. And it says, if God is for us, who can be against us? The chapter goes on to tell us that no matter what stands against us, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ because we are loved. It says, for I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So there are enemies out there. There are real threats out there that are trying to separate us from God and distract us, to devour us. But nothing shall triumph and separate us from the love of God if we are His, if we are saved, if we are His children. What an amazing truth. Nothing shall separate us from the love of Christ. I also wanted to share some reflections just with those passages in mind, as we talk about God's faithfulness in this crisis, in this pandemic, there's two things that have come to mind for me. The first is that I think this pandemic, this crisis, this time at home has showed us more of who we really are. It's removed some of those distractions, 
some of those things we used to run to for refuge and peace and just entertainment are now gone. If you were a sports person, well, sports is gone. It's removed. If you were a person who found validation and affirmation in your job, maybe you can't work right now. Maybe work looks different from you. If you're somebody who found a lot of validation and worth in your grades or maybe your social status, those have been drastically affected by this pandemic. And so it's kind of shown us who we really are. It's kind of peeled all of these things back and now we've got all this anxiety and stress and we all have all these things going on in our lives and we're faced with the reality of who we really are. And how are we going to respond to that? And that's the second thing this has been teaching me. This has been teaching me that some things are really important. It's caused me to think about the things that I've taken for granted. The things that are really important. Community and time with people. Being together with those I love and care about. Also, my time with the Lord. Because as I've been thinking about it, I run to a lot of things as well. For peace, for entertainment, just to to relax and unplug. But in this pandemic, in this season, I have found that the Lord has to be my refuge, the one I run to. I'm thankful for Hebrews 4 where the writer of Hebrews talks about the rest that we have in Jesus, that we can enter. I think about Psalm 23 and the fact that the Lord is our shepherd and he is the one who restores our soul. There are things we have access to right now in the midst of this pandemic that are important. I pray that as this reaches you, you have contact with community and family and they have been important. I pray that relationships have been really important, that you have found them to be a gift from the Lord during this season. I also pray that you found your time with the Lord and relationship with him to be of most importance during this season. He is the one who brings peace. He is the one who can ease our stress and anxiety during this moment. He is the one who is our refuge and can provide strength. No weapon formed against us will stand if we are his children, and nothing can separate us from God's love. So run after him today. Spend some time pursuing him and the things that really matter in this life. God bless. See you guys soon.